In today's video, we're looking at everything you need to know about screencasting and recording your screen in Camtasia. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, after my last video on Camtasia, I'm going to now dive a little bit deeper in the screencasting portion of how I make my videos. Now, today we'll be looking at, first of all, recording your screencast. Then we're going to clean up that footage a little bit, add some of the special effects, and then we're going to make sure that everything is edited in a way that our viewers can consume the content. So let's get started. Now, when I open up Camtasia 2021, I'm greeted with the following welcome screen. And this is where you can immediately start recording your screen. You don't have to create a project first. You don't have to make any files. You can just click on that big new recording button. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now that we've clicked on this, we see our capture window. Now this capture window has a number of options and we need to make sure that we're selecting the ones we want to use. So let's go ahead and make sure that first of all, we're turning on the screen recording. So we're going to switch that on. This is going to start previewing our window and we can also always click on this drop down arrow and have a custom region, white screen, 720p, Instagram or Facebook cover video. Now I'm hoping that there's even more options coming in the future, but for now, these are the ones available. I'm going to leave it at full screen. The next step is for us to turn on or leave off our webcam. So let's go ahead and turn this on. That way you will see exactly what I see when I record my screen. So you'll see the webcam feed right here. And then as it's recording, this will create an extra track within Camtasia. We can also turn on our microphone. Let's go ahead and turn the microphone on and you immediately see that preview there. You can see that we have this waveform moving and it automatically adjusts the volume. Next, we can choose to record the system audio. And so let's go ahead and turn on the system audio. Now, once I click on record, you're going to see a countdown and then we are good to go. So let's go ahead and click on record. Here we have that countdown, three, two, one, and it's now recording. Now Camtasia is capturing everything on your screen. So let's go ahead and open up a website. We are now on the Camtasia 2021 feature highlight website. Now the reason I'm using this website is because I'm going to use the footage that we're recording now to demonstrate some key features of your screen recordings within Camtasia. So here you can see it talks about motion blur effect, Lottie support, which is an amazing feature has come to 2021. These are little animation files that you can now use in Camtasia. It also talks about the emphasize audio effect, where you're automatically going to lower the background music and up the background music, depending on your footage. Now, the reason I've highlighted those is because during the editing section of this video, I'm going to zoom in on those parts. I'm also going to pan across my screen and demonstrate some additional features. Now, just for the sake of demonstrating how Camtasia records your mouse input, let's go ahead and click on products and let's open up the Snagit page. Now, because I've clicked on this, Camtasia has also recorded the fact that my mouse has clicked on this. So here you can see I can right click and I can left click. And again, you will see that later during the editing portion. Okay, we're ready. We've finished our recording. Now we're going to end our recording. So let's go ahead and click on stop. And this is now automatically being sent into the Camtasia 2021 editor. So once you've finished your screen recording, Camtasia will automatically create a project and then bring that footage into the project. So here you can now see, I have my preview at the top. You see the screen recording right here. And then in the bottom right corner, we have that webcam feed. Now on my timeline, these are two separate sources. So here you can see we have the screen recording and then here we have the camera recording. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the size is exactly how you want your screen recording to be. So you can move each independently from each other. So I can always move this down to the other corner. I can make it larger. I can make it smaller. Now, as you can see here, the audio is also attached to this. What we can do is we can always right click on this track and then we can separate the audio and video. We now have three tracks, one for the audio, one for the camera and one for the screen. So now let's clean up our footage and add some neat effects to our screen recording. Now, because I want to focus on the screencast first, not on the other footage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on track one 
and I'm going to choose to enable solo track. Now, when I enable solo track, this is the only track that I will see, so I can really focus on cleaning up that footage before I start editing everything else. Now, the first thing I'll do is look at the cursor. As you can see here, the cursor is fairly small, so I'm going to open up that third tab, go into the cursor properties, and I'm going to scale up my cursor. I'm going to make it 300%. As you can see, it's already a lot bigger. That means that now as I preview my track, that cursor moves around the screen and it's a much larger cursor. If you find this distracting, don't worry, you can always use your animations to change the size of the cursor throughout your screencast. Another thing I'm going to do is go to the left hand side and I'm going to find the cursor effects because I want to add cursor effects on top of my cursor. The first one I always add is cursor smoothing. Cursor smoothing is going to really clean up how this cursor moves around the screen. And as you can see, the movements are neat, straight, and it goes from click to click to click. We can also add some additional effects such as highlight effects, magnify and spotlight. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to highlight this. I'm going to use my flipped classroom tutorial colors and set this to an opacity of 30%. We can also increase the size of this highlights. So let's make it an 80 and a bit softer. Let's say that we set it to 5%. Okay. Now this cursor is being highlighted. Perfect for tutorial videos that you're sharing with your students. We can also use the spotlight. Now the spotlight will darken everything else out and then just leave a spotlight icon. Now another effect that can be very useful for your demonstration videos is the magnify effect. So when you see the magnify effect, what happens is everything underneath that cursor will be magnified. This is incredibly useful when you are highlighting text or when you're zooming in on objects that have little elements that need to be highlighted while well, the magnify effect is going to show them up close as if you're moving a magnifying glass around your screen. So here, as you can see, it magnifies everything within the area around the cursor. Perfect for those younger students. Now for this demonstration, we're not going to use the magnifying effect. So let's just go back to the tab on the right hand side and let's turn off the magnify effect. Now, in addition to these cursor effects, you also have some click highlights. So here in the middle, you can see we have the left clicks. We also have right clicks. Now this is what's going to happen whenever your mouse is clicked. So what do we want? Do we want to see rings? You can always preview this effect by just hovering over it. Do we want to see a ripple? Do we want to see a scope, hear a sound or see a target? I'm going to select both the sound and I'm going to select the warp. So now in my preview, you'll see that every time I click, it's going to have a warp and a clicking sound. This is automatically added by Camtasia, as you can see, to make your videos stand out and to make sure that everyone is aware of you clicking. Now you can do this for both left clicks and right clicks. So this can be added to your recording. Now what you'll see here is that the left clicks are red the right clicks are yellow. Now this can always be changed in your properties window. So if I have this effect added, by scrolling down, I can change the color right here of this scope effect. Okay, good and well. Let's turn off all these effects. Let's turn off smoothing, let's turn off highlights, and let's turn off warp. Time to now make sure that our students see which areas I'm talking about. And there's two things that you can use to do this. The first will be your zoom and pan. Zooming into sections, panning around the page is a great way of really drawing attention to an element on that page. And then the second tip to really highlight sections of your screencast is to use a highlight effect. So let's start with the zoom and pan. We're going to go back in our preview to the section where I talk about the updates. And now we're going to zoom into the area on the page where I talk about those Lottie files, those animation files. We're going to go to our animations window, click on more, animations. Here you will see that we have a zoom and pan and we have the animations. So let's go ahead and go to zoom and pan. Now in order for you to start zooming and panning, all you have to do is find the place on your timeline where you would like to zoom in and then simply adjust this window here and tell the program where you want to zoom into. 
So here you will see it will start zooming right here and it will end the zoom there. Now you can always manually make this longer by dragging it to the left or the right. Now let's preview this. We're going to press play. It's going to zoom into that. Okay, it talks about motion blur. And then as we move down, we're going to pan down a little bit and it's automatically going to add those animations onto your timeline. So we're going to zoom in and it pans down. And then we can always scale to fit to just bring it back to the original. So we now have this automatically zoom out. Now before we use the spotlight effect, let's just go ahead and right click on our track. We're going to disable the solo track. This way we get everything back and we're going to use the spotlight. So let's find this in annotations, blur and highlight. So here at the top, we can find spotlight. And now we can add our spotlight to our track. So you can see it's an effect that is added at the top. We can drag it there, move it around and really choose the area that is highlighted with this spotlight effect. So we're going to just readjust this. And if this is a bit much, you can always choose a different intensity here. So we're going to make it a little bit less intense. There we go. Last a bit longer. And what will happen now is as I play my file, Sports, which is an amazing feature, is come there we go. That spotlight is put onto that section. You want to fade it in, no problem. You can always go to transitions, simply select your favorite fade, add your fade, and now the spotlight will slowly fade in. Now one more thing here at the start, if you look at my timeline, you will see there is a lot of silence. So here I have myself and then we have silence. Now there are two ways of getting rid of this silence. The first is to manually select these tracks, press S to split them, press S again to split them again and then removing it as I showed you in the previous video. Now, if you are 100% sure that you are going to remove a section and you don't have to listen or check, there is a much faster way to do this. You can use the playhead. So here at the top, you can see I'm going to move the playhead to the start of this silence. Now I'm going to drag this red part of my playhead all the way to the right. And now I'm going to cut out this section. So what I can do is I can right click and I can delete that section. When I delete that section, it automatically removes it and it leaves a blank space. Alternatively, I can right click and instead of deleting the section, I can do a ripple delete. Now a ripple delete is like the control backspace. You're going to cut it out and move the rest of your timeline closer. As you can see, it automatically takes care of that split and it re-merges your sections. So the ripple delete is an incredibly useful feature to cut out ums, ahs and blank spaces. All good, our screen recording is ready to be exported as a video file or as a GIF and GIF file. Now where do we do that? At the top we go to export and click on local file. Here we can now export this as any number of these files. You can see MP4, MP4, MP4. But in addition to this, because this is a screencast and maybe your students would like to see it in a different format, when you go to custom production settings, you can click on next. And an additional option that you have is GIF or GIF files. GIFs are incredibly popular on platforms such as Twitter, websites, or for easy sharing with your students. So this is how you can start creating GIFs and GIFs that you can then share with your staff, colleagues, and students. We're going to select the MP4. Let's click on next. Make sure all our settings are what we want them to be. Click on next again. Choose where we want to save this file. Next, going to give it a project. So I'm going to say demo screencast and we're going to save it on our desktop. There we go. Do you want to show the production results? Yes, I want to leave this text on and then organize it in subfolders. Okay, we're going to click on finish. Everything is being rendered now. As you can see here on my desktop, it's creating that folder. And as the file is being rendered, it will automatically appear in this folder. This is my screencast. So I've recorded my screen, I've demoed something, then I've used those features such as highlight, spotlight, zoom and pan to really focus on a single area 
make sure my students see what I'm talking about, really understand that area, and then I've exported the video. So this is how you can create even better screencasts using Camtasia 2021. Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you wanna try out Camtasia by yourself, there is a link in that description below. You can have a trial of Camtasia. And if you do decide to purchase it, there is a 10% discount link. You can automatically apply it to the cart and then you will get 10% off. And it's an affiliate link, so I'll get a kickback as well. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.